Navy Regulations, Article 1037. The deck log shall be a complete daily record by watches in which shall be described every circumstance and occurrence of importance or interest which concerns the crew and the operation and safety of the ship, or which may be of historical value. These are the men of the United States Navy. They come from all corners of the country, all walks of life. The reasons why they joined the Navy are many, and some date back to childhood. This is the true story of one of them. Dad, that's a beauty. Where'd you get him? Got him over in the valley, Bill. Gee, I wish I'd been with you. But I'll tell you something. What? If I'd had a real gun, I could have brought home a deer, too. Oh, is that so? Honest. There's a deer that comes down the stream to drink every day. I've been stalking him all along. Dad, when can I have a real gun? Well, maybe your next birthday, Bill. You'll be about old enough then. Honest? That's a promise. Gee. <laughs> Gosh. Gosh, Dad, a real Winchester. Happy birthday, Bill. You'll be very careful, won't you, Billy? Don't worry about me, Ma. I'm going to bring you home a lot of fresh meat for the winter. You wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me show you. There you are. Thanks, Dad. Wait a minute, where are you going? I'm going down the river to get that white tail. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before you go hunting deer, you got to learn how to use that thing. Come on. See? Uh-huh. All right, you try it. Good shooting. Can I go get that deer now, Dad? Yeah, I think you're ready, Bill. All right, son, get ready. Well, go on, take aim. Well, go on, son, what are you waiting for? Shoot. Bill, what's the matter? I couldn't. I just couldn't. Well, why not? I don't know. He, he seemed like an old friend, like a person. I didn't want to kill him. I didn't want to hurt him. I... I just couldn't. You must think I'm an awful sissy. <laughs> why, it's all right, boy. It's all right. I understand. A.M. Sunday, 25 June, 1950. Place, Korea. Situation, war. This was the war that was not really a war. But in many a home, there was soul searching. I'm not going to wait to be drafted. I'm going to enlist. All right, Bill, if that's your decision. But, Billy, you're only a boy. I'm 17, Mom. It's old enough to join the Navy. The Navy? That's right. You seem surprised. Well, I, I guess I am. Since I was an Army man, I always thought you'd join the Army, too. I've given it a lot of thought, Dad. I've spent a lot of nights thinking about it. 
No, I'm going to tell you why it's the Navy. All right. I want to fight. I want to fight as much as anyone does. I'd like to go up front where all the action is. But the one thing I couldn't stand is the thought of killing anyone face to face. I mean where I could see who I was killing. This is war, Bill. In the Navy, it's kill or be killed, too. I know. I, I just figured it, it might be different. Impersonal, you know what I mean? It's different on a, on a cruiser or a destroyer. Sure, you're trying to kill the other fellow, but... Well, you never see him face to face. You're shooting at ships, not at people. You know what I mean? I know, I, I must seem a little crazy, but... I just couldn't stand the thought of killing a man face to face. Any more than I could shoot that deer when I was a kid. I, I, I'm not afraid of being killed. I'm afraid to kill. Do you understand me, Dad? Yes, I think I do. Tell me the truth, Dad. You're disappointed in me, aren't you? No, you're wrong, Bill. I'm, I'm pretty proud of you. You know, it takes a lot of courage to admit what you did just now. Time, 1100. Place, Navy Recruiting Station, Portland. Duty, interrogation of recruits. Second line from the top. C-P-V-F-L. All right. And the third line from the bottom? T-O-Z-C-E-L-D-F. All right, son. Will you take off your glasses? Now, will you cover your right eye and read with your left? Second line from the bottom. I can't see it, Doctor. Well, how about the third line? Well, that one's blurry, too. Well, let's try the second from the top. C, D, W, F, L. Mm-hmm. Try reading with the right eye. C, D, W, F, L. All right, son, that's all. Thank you. Sayers, your IQ is the best in your group. Your physical requirements were almost perfect. Almost? Your eyesight. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, son, but it's under standard. Does that mean you're not going to take me? Sorry, Sayers, we can't. But, but, sir, I want to get into the Navy. I want to fight, don't you understand? Supposing my eyes are a little under par. I can see fine with my glasses on. What difference does it make? Son, it's a matter of regulations. Regulations? What difference could they make in a case like this? They can make plenty. Ever hear of standing the watch? The watch? The most important job any man has to do in the Navy. Suppose, Sayers, you got caught without your glasses. Suppose you had to stand the watch one night. And suppose that because of your poor eyesight, you missed a periscope or a conning tower of an enemy sub. Know what might happen? Let me tell you. Your poor eyesight might make the difference between the loss of a ship and several hundred of your buddies under survival. A man who stands the watch has to have 20-20 eyesight at all times. See my point? Yes, sir, I guess so. You might miss a semaphore signal or mistaken identification on another ship or fail to identify an enemy plane or the other way around. It all comes back to the same thing. I know. You don't have to tell me. The watch. But there's only one thing wrong. What's that? I want to get into the Navy, sir. I want to get in so bad, it's, it's coming out my ears. There must be something I can do. There must be. I'll say this, Sayers. You've got the spirit we like. Then give me a chance. I don't care what I do. Just give me a chance. Tell you what. I think you're too good a man for us to let go. I'm going to recommend you for a waiver on your eyesight. A waiver? For specialist duty only. Time, 1500. Place, Great Lakes Training Center, Illinois. Duty, beginning of boot training. From civilian to sailor in nine weeks. In the Navy, your name goes on everything, just in case it gets lost, or you do.
in the Navy, you also have to know this, just in case. Even a non-combatant, just in case. Hey, Specs. Yes, sir. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? My father taught me. Well, he should taught you good. Prone, kneeling, rapid fire. It doesn't make any difference whether it's two or five hundred yards. They're all bulls or fours. And the crazy part of it is you're listed here as specialist. Yes, sir. But I'd like to see some action, though. You would, huh? I'd like to be on a, a tin can or a battle wagon, someplace where there's fighting. I'll tell you, kid, I'm with you. You ought to be where the fighting is. Would you put in a word for me to the classification officer, sir? Come on, kid. I'll bend his ear. It, sir? Not quite. Oh, then I won't be seeing any action, huh? I wouldn't put it that way. You may see more than you want. What do you mean? From now on, your name isn't Specs. It's Doc. Doc? From here in, you're a hospital corpsman attached to the hospital corps school. Well, what's that mean? It means that you won't be shooting at anybody. The only thing you have to worry about is the other guy shooting at you. Time, 0530. Unit, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Marines Division. Place, Korea. Duty, establish beachhead and move inland. The enemy was weak on the beaches, but he was plenty beefed up just ahead, ready and waiting. The time just before attack. A time when even the bravest man can be afraid. And on every face, the big question. Who will come back and who will not? Some have been trained to kill and some to heal. How much longer? Two more minutes and they go. I wonder how many will come back. Funny, I've always wanted to be a doctor. That's how I got my corpsman's ticket. But I never thought it would be this way. I thought it would be in a nice, clean, white, sterile hospital with good-looking nurses and clean beds. It's funny the way things turn out. You're disappointed, huh? To tell you the truth, no. All I ever wanted to do was to help. Help people with these hands. Here or at home, it doesn't matter. All I hope is I'm up to it when the time comes. It'll be okay. Billy, the thing is, I like it better this way. I'd rather be saving people than killing them. I know somebody's got to do the killing, but I'm glad I can help this way. So am I. Hey, Specs. Yeah. Got a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Light? Mm-hmm. First action you guys been in, ain't it? You scared? Sure. Anybody that says he ain't's a liar. You give me a couple of tips. You get out there, keep low. Understand? You run, walk, stand, keep low. Best place is on your belly if you can do it. Got it? Yeah. You know who you're fighting out there? Chinese, North Koreans. Animals. And they won't be taking no prisoners. Savvy? Savvy. Maybe to sound crazy, but I'd rather be me than you. Why? Oh, red comes at me, I got a chance. It's you guys. You know, for my money, a corpsman's got the toughest deal out there. Thanks for telling us. Figure if I scare you guys hard enough, you keep your heads down. Go one more minute, we sure fall. I hope we won't be seeing you back here, Pete. <laughs> Don't worry about me. 
My ticket's good for this war. What makes you so sure? I've been through them all. Tarawa, Saipan, Iwo. Well, it ain't been made that could spell my name. See what I mean? Bunker Hill, Pan Munjam area. Duty, stand by for casualties. How is it out there? That's oh, bad. I slept on a temporary. Better handle him faster, he's a goner. Okay. Louis, can you handle this alone? Sure, Billy. All use, Billy. The guys had it. Job. Hey, it's Hi, Hi, Pete. Was it close? Too close. Told you they couldn't spell my name. Must have left out a Z. Okay, Specs. We'll take over. You relieve us. Buddy, we'll have you out of here in no time. Go ahead, Louis. I can take care of him. Don't try and talk. Huh? I'll have you fixed up in a second. He didn't even have a gun. He never had a chance. They have to do it for him. Take it easy, Specs. He was a friend of mine. We came out here together. We went through training together. Sure, I know. And that soldiers out there, it's like Pete said, they're animals. Where you went from, Joe? Thank bushwhackers. The whole stretch of the party. Got us and pinned us down. Where? Down in the ravine. Can they get out? Not a chance. They're, they're 
were pinned down on all sides. I was the only one to get out. Where are you going? Down on that ravine. Well, you'll never make it. I can try. You're not supposed to be carrying weapons. You know anybody that's going to stop me? never wanted to kill. Now it's time. But what are they waiting for? Why don't they shoot and be done with it? What are they waiting for? What's the matter, buddy? You gone crazy? I lost my glasses. Yes, sir. According to this, contrary to orders, you appropriated several varieties of small arms and used them in combat. Yes, sir. According to this report, by your own action, you cleared the way to a besieged party of stretcher bearers, killing several of the enemy in armed combat above and beyond the call of duty. And that, Corman Sayers, entitled you to a new rating. A new rating, sir? Well, in a way of speaking, yes. Silver Star, honorably discharged, 7 April. Yeah. <laughs> 